What's up, y'all? Wow. Oh, my. Hey, give me a break. It's been five, four, five, six. It's been a long time. I almost took a break from, from shooting these YouTube videos because I'm on here looking reckless. I started thinking about you guys. I started thinking about everybody who's cooped up, quarantined in the house, knocking out their mixes. They need the nuggets. They need the knowledge. You need the gems. You need the tricks. You need the hacks. So here I am. Laying my ego on the side, bringing you all the tips, all the tricks, all the hacks, all the tools, all the gems, all the sauce nuggets, all the nuggets. So as you can see in the title, this video is going to be about the importance of having a workflow whenever you mix or how to mix efficiently. One of the things that I really struggled early on with was having a consistent workflow whenever I mixed. You know, certain mixes I would start with the vocals, other mixes I would start with the with the drums, other mixes I would start with the keys, other mixes I would start with the reverb on the vocals, and my brain would just be all over the place. That in return made my mixes end up lasting five, six, seven, eight hours. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but there is something wrong whenever you're whenever you start mixing and you're five hours into the mix and you sit back and listen to it and you start to realize that it actually sounded better five hours ago. If you can relate, I'm making this video just for you. What I ended up doing is I would break my mixing process down into two separate days. So we're really just going to break today down into two separate parts. Into day one being the technical day. Basically that's just importing your files, labeling your files properly, color coding your files, importing your mix templates. Really just the dirty work. The technical day, there's no creative juices flowing. This is really cut and dry. Nothing fancy, nothing exciting. We're going to leave that for day number two, which in this video, I'm going to refer to day number two as the sauce day. You know what I'm talking about the sauce the drip the drip you know day number two is whenever i allow myself to get real creative adding the reverbs making sure all the echoes are hitting in the right spots really dialing in all the creative juices and probably all the stuff that you really enjoy doing as a mix engineer it really allows me to stay focused on the task whenever i have everything broke down and i'm not having to worry about all the technical things whenever i'm not having to worry about the you know taking out breaths whenever i'm not having to worry about if everything's color coded and i've got all my things labeled properly it helps me really focus in and whenever we get to the sauce day my creative juices are totally flowing because I'm not having to worry about any of the technical things because we've already got that knocked out. With that, I'm gonna share my Pro Tools screen with you guys. Let's go ahead and jump into it. This is day number one, the technical day that I referenced a little bit earlier. So normally what I do whenever I get these sessions is I will open the session, just assuming you've got everything imported already. And the first thing that I like to do during this day is play the track through just a few times. That way I can get an idea of the direction that the client wanted to go. I can, uh, you know, see what effects they were using in certain parts. As I can see here, they had a little altar boy. There's an imager. And that just kind of gives me a chance to tap into the mind of the client and really just get the clear direction of where they wanted to go with the mix. And as I played it through, uh, I'm typically not at the at the mixing station, I normally just kind of walk around the room, take notes on my phone of anything that kind of stood out or anything that I felt like I needed to take notes on uh, to come back to whenever I'm mixing. That leads me right into point number two, which is organizing and color coding my session. So in this example, everything is, fortunately everything's labeled. Then what I'll do now is I'll just go through and color code the things uh, the way that I like to see them whenever I mix. So I have certain colors that I, that I personally like doing um, for the hook. I'll typically do like a purple. Just organize things the way that you like to see them whenever you're mixing. What I like to do from there is just some basic cleanup. So point number three of this day one, this technical day is the session cleanup. This is the bulk of kind of the dirty work. So, you know, sometimes if you import like an MP, if they record on like an MP3 beat, I would have to uh, drag the session back just a little bit because if you've mixed, you've probably noticed that sometimes MP3s will, there'll be a little blank space right here that you'll have to trim off if they record on an MP3. That type stuff fades. But from there, another thing that I like to do too is I'll go in and manually take out any breaths that don't need to be there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna actually time lapse this. We'll come back after I get this knocked out. Wow. So get you a client, 
that takes out a lot of the breaths and does all the, a lot of the fading for you before they even send over the session. That makes it very simple. So that's what uh, has happened here. That's why I was able to actually edit this very fast. Uh, and as you've seen too, as I just did a subtle fade, some basic things like that, that's kind of all a part of the, just the real basic cleanup stuff. So that leads us really into the last part of day number one. At this point, what I like to do is I will typically import my mix template. And boom. Then what I will do here is I'll just make sure once again that everything's kind of organized the way that I like it. Typically what I have to do at that point is select my outputs to where it's going to my, my vocal bus and my mix template. And from there, what I'll normally do during this technical day is kind of dial in some of the compression. Nothing, like nothing real fancy. Just really trying to get it in the ballpark for the sauce day. So that's kind of all I'm doing here. And I'll kind of give you a time lapse of exactly what I do here. Blowing on the cone in my zone, that's what I be. I can see my numbers going up, I think they like me. Hey, yeah, you know I'm quick to pop out. Right back to. Alright guys, as you probably seen, I didn't do hardly anything at all with the with the reverb. Just kind of got it very subtle in there, just kind of in the ballpark, just to kind of get an idea of where I'm going with it. Sometimes during this day, I'll also add some of my uh, comfort plugins, if you want to call it that. I just feel safer having, you know, some certain plugins, specifically this UAD 1176 plugin. You may not be able to hear it. I just, I feel better about having it on there. A lot of times I'll also throw certain plugins that I know that I'll be putting on the lead vocals during this prep day as well. But as you can see, this is a very cut and dry day. There's nothing fancy about it. Really just, you know, making notes of where the track already was. And point number two, organizing and color coding your session. Point number three, what we did is we just kind of went in and cleaned up the session just a little bit. Cleaned up some of the breaths, faded certain parts of the, of the vocals, just your basic cleanups. And we imported our mix template, dialed in some of the basic compression, EQ, just the basic stuff to kind of get me ready for day number two, which is the sauce day. I kind of have this laid out into four parts as well, just like day number one. So obviously I'll come back on a totally separate day. I'll have fresh ears, I'll play a few parts just to kind of remember where I was to kind of tap into that vibe again. And I'll also start taking notes again. So just like day number one, the first step of, of day number two of the sauce day is going to be playing the record back and just taking some potential notes. From that point, I will start mixing the verse. You know, some people may start with with the hook for me i don't know why it just it's a better workflow for me personally so what i'll do is i'll just kind of play through the verse make any edits that i may have wrote down in my notes but what i've noticed is whenever i stick to certain parts of the song you know if if the hook works out better for you just stick to the hook don't worry about anything else. You know, if the verse works better for you like it does for me, just stick to the verse. That way, you know, you're totally zoned in on one specific part. Your brain isn't all over the place. You can really stay focused at the task at hand. That way you can mix efficiently and you can make decisions a little more quickly. I'm not gonna actually mix during this specific video, but say, you know, say I knock out everything with this verse, then what I would do from that point is just go on to the hook and start mixing the hook, you know, make any specific edits that I may have put down in the, in the notes. You know, after we've got the hook knocked out, you're just about done with your mix. You know, another thing that I would like to do toward the back end after I get everything mixed kind of where I like it, I'll just kind of play it all the way through. I'll normally like to sit back on a couch, not in my mix chair, but you kind of sit back in the couch, you know, make any notes, come back and adjust if I need to. If everything sounds good on that playback, what I'll typically do is I'll play the file through my iPhone. I'll play it through my headphones to make sure that it sounds good there. And by by that point, if everything sounds good, my mix is ready to send off to the client. But with that being said, guys, that kind of wraps up today's video. Hopefully this kind of helps. Hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of clarity on how to mix a little bit more efficient, on how to approach your mix with a clear mindset rather than you know, approaching a mix and everything just kind of being all over the place and your brain is co constantly thinking about all different kinds of things and hopefully shave off a little bit of time of your mix process. Hey, and if you do have a specific workflow, 
let me know down in the comments. I would love to kind of hear how you guys work. You know, this has just kind of worked for me over the years. This is what I've stuck with. This is what I've got used to. And if you do implement this and you didn't have a workflow before, I would love to hear how this helps. Let me know how this impacts your efficiency. But that wraps up the video for today. Hopefully you guys are staying safe during this, uh, this quarantine time. But until next time, I'm getting out of here. Peace.